Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. Hello, hello, Andrew, Jason, and Chen. Yay! <laughs> Thanks Yay. so much for joining me. I'm so happy to see you all. Uh, so from Max to HBO to Netflix, Warrior is literally the appropriate name for this show because you guys just keep on fighting and swinging. It's amazing. Each of your characters, though, are fighters and warriors in their own different ways. And so I would love to hear a little bit on your take on like what your character is fighting for and like the motivation behind their fight, you know, whether it's physical or whether it's, you know, just kind of deep seated into their persona. But I guess we'll jump. We'll start with Andrew. I mean, there's, there's there's different things. Is like you 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 super objective, and each objective you break it down to different objectives. Uh, Assam essentially is, I think, fighting for his place in the world, uh, uh, fighting for family, and I guess, and uh, but obviously his journey is to learn, uh, or, or was to learn, going from being a you know hot headed great fighter to a, a true martial artist, and I think. Uh, each fight is different. Um, should have different objectives. Either, you're, you're either protecting, defending. You're either uh, uh, teaching someone a lesson, or you're, you're you're letting a lot of anger out, or you know you're really being put to the test and being very technical. And this could be loads of different reasons, uh, ways that Assam I think fights. I think obviously season one he uh, lacks a lot of purpose and he's a bit of a hothead. And he's from a small town. And he thinks that he was the best, but actually he's come to this town. And he's learned that he's not. Um, and that people play by a very different uh, set of rules. And then season two, he's venting a lot of anger out and getting with them, learning to find what he um, and must fight for. Season three, I think he finds that. So, um, yeah, I, that, that kind of encapsulates yeah, it, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, how about you, Jason? I, I feel like with, with Young June, you know, he was born in America, but he's Chinese and um, he lives in Chinatown. And the feeling that I have with, with Young June is that, you know, if he doesn't, if he doesn't have something to fight for, if he's not actively looking for a fight, he's just going to wither away and die. Like there is no sort of living peacefully and just going about your day and sort of minding your own business. It's either, it's either die, perish or fight every goddamn day and for him that focus is his tom like and um he has to hold on to it with dear life and if there isn't a fight to be had then he is just going to slip away so there's like this need for a fight um and um and 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 that's why at a drop of a hat he will fight and it's literally like he, it sustains him so to speak and the, the only time that 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 kind of like goes beyond his own personal survival and the survival of the Tong is in season two when it becomes more about Chinatown and Young Jun starts to change and go, oh, you know, we are fighting for something else. There's, and it kind of shakes his uh, uh, belief system up. But yeah, other than that, it's it's really that, that the fight is what feeds him. Yeah, absolutely. And how about you, Chen? Yeah. You know what? These guys have talked so deep and poetic and waxed <laughs> poetic. I'm going to say, Jason, you said <laughs> that the fight is what feeds him. You know, what I chose for Hong was this guy simply fights to eat. I took it as more of like a, no, no. I mean, like, you know, I said That's that fair. literally, you know. Yeah, literally. Um, yeah. Because I took it as more of like a, like a wild animal in nature. If mm -hmm. this is the world that he has gone and been brought up in from China, and that is all he knows. It's not so much like there's no deeper meaning behind it because it's simply survival. And because of that, I also chose that, you know, it's interesting, like loyalty. You know, I'm a loyal dude, but it was really just simply because this is you're loyal to the thing that keeps you alive. And that's all you've known. So in some ways, um, I actually chose that Hong actually isn't loyal. He didn't have any loyalty coming here. He just came here to get out. And uh, when I first met Asan and Young Jun, you know, I wanted to befriend them because it would be the highest chances of survival on some deep level. I knew that. But what I found was really interesting after during, you know, season two, episode nine, after the Chinatown ride, it was the first time I still remember that scene when we were taking down 
the body um and 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 after the lynching and it was the first time i actually felt like there's something deeper here maybe we should fight for something like family and even if you didn't want to, uh it was you know you try to try to keep it just about surviving you don't think about anything you can't help but start to fall in love with the people you're around and you they're the real family now and it's Absolutely. not just about yourself yeah, one of the things I love so much about this show, and I am a huge fan, of course, of all of you, but it's the characters themselves. They're not one dimensional. You know, I, I I often hear the phrase like, I'm a good person that has done very bad things, and I am a bad person that has done very good things. And I think each of the characters in this entire cast, like all of you have so much depth in the in the different um, characters and everything. And I know there's a lot of weight on your shoulders as you each navigate uh, who you are in the film. And obviously, Andrew, it must be just a ton of pressure because you are carrying on this legacy with literally Shannon Lee on the sidelines. Um, how do you handle that pressure or, or do you not feel pressure at all? I didn't do much at first because uh, you know, I was thinking about this. Someone asked me something recently. It was like the time the show wasn't what it is now. We didn't know, we didn't know what it was, you know? Yeah. It was weirdness. There was strangeness of uh, you know people calling me because they thought I was literally playing Bruce Lee. A lot of people, so they would they, they right. a lot of the even the crew would shout Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee. I'm like oh, I'm not playing Bruce Lee. <laughs> um, uh, and I think you know, uh, and I think there was he, he was a psalm was written a lot more to be a bit more Bruce like. Even in, in episode one, season one, he was kind of coming out and he was doing the monkey oh ki okay, kind of stuff. Um, but. Uh, yeah, at the time I was just, I guess I was, I, I was just an actor who'd been given this job, and I was like, oh, well, I need to, I, I want to learn and do as much, do as the best job that I can. The con, the other pressure, uh, I didn't, I, the, it wasn't so much there. I guess it was more towards when it was coming out and stuff. Um, and then after that, it time turned into, into a thing. I kind of feel more of the pressure afterwards since the show's come out as like I've got the reputation. Probably since season two, two and three, I feel like I've got more of a a reputation to uphold because of that um so i think it's more for me the pressure is kind of a bit more after because i'm associated with that show which has now become like a bruce lee part of his uh legacy so at the time season one it wasn't it wasn't that it was like a job didn't know if it was going to be any good didn't know if it was going to be successful didn't know if it was going to be seen by anyone didn't even know if i'd make it through the season one uh you know filming that so now it's just a bit different of like yeah i've got a i've got a there's a bit of a legacy behind that i guess i don't know Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm giving the two minute warning here. So Chen, I'm actually really thrilled to see your character who comes out with pride and the portrayal of the LGBT community, especially during that time period. Do you feel like any weight in that sense of the way? Or do you just, you know, like, like what Andrew said, you're just, I'm doing my show. I'm, I'm doing the script and, and getting into character. Or do you feel a little bit of weight? I would actually feel it was the opposite of weight. It was more of an honor. It gave me so much strength and so much of the way I portrayed Hong and how I created it and the choices that I made came from uh, his sexuality and uh, and his sexuality in that time yes. and how I would see the world and how it felt like we were so, you just want to be accepted mm -hmm. and not hide, you know? Right. Yeah, so absolutely. That's that was that was such an honor. Yeah, yeah, it was an honor. So it actually that that it actually actually in some ways it took off the pressure. Yeah, thank you for that. And then Jason, you and I we got to speak at length and on our podcast, and yeah. you you and I yes. spoke at how thrilled you were that when you got there, your hair and costume were just like the ante kept mm. going up and up. But you really on the show embody that next generation, and you know, kind of mm. we've had previous conversations. But as a parent yourself, I'm sure you can relate mm. to a lot of the scenes between you and Father June. Um, do you channel mm. yourself as a father, or put yourself in his shoes? Like, how does that work when you're kind of in those really intense scenes that that has taken us through all of the seasons really yeah yeah you know I always feel like uh the roles I've played have somehow met me at the right time of my life and so with Warrior and particularly the relationship that I have with Father June and, and the the thing the things that we explore in, in that relationship um have met me at the right time in my life you know as a father in real life and and also at my relationship with my own dad and yeah you know uh, it, uh filming those scenes with with Perry in season three were yeah, I mean they were heavy. They were heavy, uh, yeah. and um, you know you you have to work out your own demons, and you know uh, you, you know I'm talking to Perry, but I'm talking 
to myself and I'm talking to my dad and I'm talking to my kids and it's uh yeah um you know what a wonderful art form it, it is that we get to do and you know I'm, I'm getting goosebumps just 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 talking about it right now yeah it was all very moving and all of you um just really knock it out of the park I'm excited for this potential season four I would love if uh each of you could just do a quick like call to action like watch on Netflix just so that I can put together a really amazing reel feel free to you know add a little you know martial arts to it if you want you don't have to but I want to do something fun is this is the year of the dragon and I feel like we are going to get this done together so whoever wants to go first and then I'll put uh, it together. In, the year of the, in the year of the dragon Binge and two thumbs up, warrior. Come on, let's go. Yeah, get that completion rate. Get the completion rate. First two weeks, most important. Watch it all the way through. Get the completion rate if you want to season four. Uh, two thumbs up and completion rate. Boom, bish, bash, yes. boss. Yes. Excited for old fans and a whole lot of new ones. Um, it's very bingeable. So once you start, it's quite addictive. I'll say that for real. Most 100%. People... people People always ask me, like, you know, is there going to be a season four? I'm telling you, it's in your hands. It's not in our hands anymore. The fans, yeah. the fans, you have, you have the opportunity to play a role in this. Let's go. <laughs> they already have so much. Yeah, yeah. So much. And we need I mean, them again. <laughs> we're gonna keep. We're gonna yes. keep pushing for that, yeah. everybody. And um, yes. just selfishly, I would love to have you all back on for a longer podcast because they're giving me the wrap up right now. Um, I'd love to yes, really talk to you. It. I mean, Jason, I've had you on before, but I'd love you guys to join me. Um, just uh, I'd love to be able to reach out. So thank you so much for your time yeah. today, though. And I know that uh, you have more of these to do. So <laughs> thank you yeah. so much, Sifu Mimi Chan. Thank you. Sifu. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Chad, you. you're too funny. Thank you. Bye, right. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye. Thank you so Happy much. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hello. Gong e fachoi. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram or Facebook.